we are going to do an experiment to study a relation between limiting friction and normal force. We will also find the coefficient of friction between two surfaces which are made to slide. Friction, the tendency to oppose the relative motion between two surfaces in contact is called friction. Static friction, it is the frictional force acting between two solid surfaces in contact at rest but having a tendency to move or slide with respect to each other. Limiting friction, it is the maximum value of force of static friction when one body is on the verge of sliding with respect to the other body in contact. Supposing I consider a block and I talk about two surfaces here, one which is a little less rough and the other is sandpaper. If I take a spring balance to just support how much force is exerted if I take it, the limiting friction would be the friction which is set up between these two just when it is about to slide. If you notice the same block when placed on top of a rough surface would require more force. That means the limiting value of friction has changed. So force of friction can change its value and this value is important to us. Kinetic or dynamic friction, it is the frictional force acting between two solid surfaces in contact when they are actually in relative motion. For our experiment, we have a horizontal table with glass fixed on it, a block of wood, a pulley arrangement with a pan fixed here. You have some weights and a spirit level and a spring balance. What we are going to do with it is that we are going to make sure that the value of friction or the pull that is exerted here by the weights placed in the pan and the weight of the pan itself matches the value of the friction which is coming up between these two surfaces. Because the pull is in this direction, the force of friction would be in the opposite direction. If you were to draw a free body diagram for this one, it would look something like this. For the block, the weight of the block would be this, the weight of this block acting downwards. The reaction would be upwards, the normal force. And if you notice, this is accounting for whatever pull is being placed on this thread, which is inextensible and continuous. So this particular thread will pull the block in this direction. How much pull it will have will depend upon what force I apply there, which in turn means that the weight of the pan and whatever weights we I put inside it. Opposing this pull till this block starts to move would be this force of friction acting in the opposite direction. If the block is not moving as it is right now, then all the forces are balanced on it. These are concurrent forces acting simultaneously on this block, but the block is not moving. Let us now take observations. Our first observation is the study of our spring balance. So we will see the range of the spring balance. As you can see, it is 0 to 500 grams. We are going to see the least count of the spring balance and carefully see it is 10 grams. Next, we will find the mass of this pan and without it resting on anything, if you notice this value is 30 grams. We also require the weight of the block, so suspend it from the spring balance again without letting it touch anything. Notice 
its weight is 120 grams. Acceleration due to gravity at the place where we are performing this experiment can be taken as 9.8 meters per second square. In order to tabulate our readings, let's make our observation table. Say you have the first column which has mass on the block, the next column mass in the pan, then we calculate the normal force which would be mass of the block plus what we place on the block. Next column would be limiting friction, which is going to be the pull, which would be the weight of the pan plus the weights we put inside it. And the last column is for mu, which is the ratio of force of friction to the force of normal reaction. First, we do not put anything here and let us see if this is going to move. So, 0 on top, so the weight here is 120 and this is not moving. So, we can put say 1 gram. So, our first reading would be by starting up with 1 gram weight here. As you tap this, this gently tapping would make this block move. That means, this pull is exactly equal to the limiting value of friction. This reading can be recorded and next reading you take a 50 gram weight, additionally put it on top of this block. So, the total weight here is 120 plus a 50. So, 170 would be your normal force. Load the pan in order to make it move and say I add a 2 grams to it. Adding an additional 2 grams and tapping again is not moving this block. So, I need to increase the pull. So, I add some more and let us check out whether this weight is sufficient. It is. So, therefore, we add up all the weights here which is 7 grams in the pan and this is equal to 170. So, our second reading would be recorded here. Again, add 50 grams on top of the block. Check out how much weight is required here. Say I pull out 14 grams and that is just enough. So, 14 grams in the pan, 100 on top of this, this would be our next reading. In addition, one more 50 grams and let us check out what will be the weight placed here and this time let us increase the weight again and see what value we have. The gentle tapping indicates that 24 grams here is sufficient to move this block, just move it. So, the next reading would be 150 on the block and in the pan 24 and so the normal force is 270 and over here it is 54. So, this is a set of readings. What will you do with these readings now? You find and fill up the last column for the coefficient of friction, which you will obtain by dividing the force of friction by normal force. In each of the cases, your value is coming out to be approximately 0 0.2. So, find that value, find an average or mean value of that. So, your calculations will give you the value for coefficient of friction. Notice there will be no unit. You are finding the ratio for both the forces and the force of friction has a unit of say Newton and the force of uh, um, your normal force also has the same unit. So, there will be no unit here. You can also plot a graph and this graph would be between limiting friction F and the normal force. If you look at this graph, the slope is going to be the value of mu or coefficient of friction. So, you can report your result. So, you have learnt an easy way of finding out the relation between limiting friction and normal force. You also learnt how in the laboratory you can find the value for this ratio between limiting friction and normal force which is your coefficient of friction. 
You can also establish with, with the same apparatus that the force of friction does not depend upon the surface area. So, what would happen if this was the condition in which you would place your block? If this is this situation, would you get the same value or not? You could also change the surface here by putting some sandpaper below this block. You can make this surface different. You can put card sheets. You can find out how much is the friction between different surfaces. This is important because friction plays a very important role in our life, in machine systems, in systems which wherever there is a sliding tendency, you require force of friction and in turn the value for limiting friction. Because if you do not want something to slide off some surface, then you must take into account the value of limiting friction.